Yo, it's time. Let's go. What is going on, guys? This is Michael Williams from God's Universe, and I was not expecting this today. I was not ready. I was not ready for this fire promo right here at all. I was doing a million things. Uh, I got fries in the oven. I'm probably going to burn them, but we need to talk about this because this is much more important than fries or anything else. This, my boy, this is Star vs. the Forces of Evil, and this is probably one of the most exciting, if not potentially the most exciting promo I've seen so far. It is getting right into the gritty goodness. Like I predicted, the last promo was pretty chill, pretty lighthearted, nothing super heavy, not you know, nothing super plot-driven, but this joint right here, son. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Eclipsa. Ah. So I'm going to try to go through this as fast as possible. Because uh, I have a billion things I got to do. But I, ha I had to talk about this freaking promo. Because this is just absolutely insane. There's a lot to digest. So get ready. Uh, and also, side note. Eclipsa might be the new waifu. Just saying. I didn't have a star, star, a star bay. But Eclipsa might be the one. Even though she's like a few hundred years old. Anyway. <laughs> So here we go. It's starting off with Glosseric doing sort of a dive. It looks like he's still kind of messed up in the head, as we saw in the last promo. He seemed he, like he was kind of out of it, so we still don't know how Glosseric returned, and this isn't doesn't look like it's really explaining any of that here. So it looks like he still might be kind of losing his mind. He's kind of doing a, a dive scream, and Eclipsa grabs this man and starts rubbing his gem... And he's chill. He's just chilling. I've never seen Glossary get taken out that quickly and smoothly without any sort of effort. And Star even asks, how did you do that and teach me how? And Eclipsa is here, my boy. Let's go. She turns back uh, and she says, that sounds delightful. Giving the, giving them, giving them, them, them evil, them evil bedroom eyes, son. Look at, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Anyway. So then the Magical High Commission and Queen Moon and some generic knights <laughs> barge through this garden. Uh, I'm assuming this is a mu the Mumin Garden with the castle and stuff like that. Because that's where Eclipsa and Star were. And Omnitraxis grabs her. Uh, it's a really quick shot right there. Omnitraxis grabs her. They are not playing any games with this woman whatsoever. And it says the butterflies, family pass, blah, blah, blah. And uh, Moon's really concerned for Star. And Star's obviously confused. Moon says, you know, did she hurt you? Glosseric seems really out of it. So, like I said, kind of kind of confirming that he seems sort of like brain dead. He's acting really strange. He's not quite himself yet. So they clearly have to do something to Glosseric to kind of get him back on track. Um, and she said, you know, she was just talking to this nice lady. Star's just chilling. She's a, she's a nice girl. And then you see Star and Eclipse of Bonding. Oh my god, they're wasting no time here. I don't know how they're even going to fit anything else in, into this this uh, this star bomb, if you will. Uh, this is just absolutely insane. So Eclipse is just chilling with her, with her hair down. She doesn't have her hat. She's just, you know, nice and casual. She's cutting some flowers right here. Looks like dead flowers in the little, little pot. Uh, and Star seems like she's kind of in charge of, like, taking care of Glosseric, I guess. Because of Glosseric, again, he's looking really limp. He's looking really soggy right here. So it doesn't look like he is in his full capacity, uh, strength-wise or mental mentally. And um, we see the shot of Omnitraxis, and he's holding uh, Eclipsa. And uh, we see Queen Moon say, you know, that's Eclipsa. Star doesn't understand. She's like, oh, I'm just talking to the nice lady. Which, again, that's something that we were kind of expecting. That, like, yeah, maybe Eclipse is not the evil person that we thought she was. Maybe there are some undertones there. But for the most part, we figured that, you know, the whole her being this dark queen and evil and terrible probably came from the humans being straight up racist <laughs> towards monsters and the fact that she was in love with a monster and... As we saw, Star and her are bonding, and Star is very confused what the problem is. Um, and so she doesn't seem phased by Omnitraxis at all, which is terrifying because Omnitraxis is pretty powerful. It was only taken down by Toffee Ludo. Um, so the fact that she's not even remotely concerned, I can't wait to see what Eclipse's power is capable of when she dips down. So we'll have to wait and see. Nothing like that here in this trailer yet. Hopefully we will get it during the string of episodes, though. Um, and, uh, Star's family's past, threaten Star's future, and now we see, uh, Star in a little bed, and they're on, they got, she's got these little electrical things 
on her cheek marks. And obviously we all know the cheek marks are symbols of, you know, the Mumins and the royal family and all that good stuff. So I'm very curious what's happening here. I feel like this might be sort of a uh, proper type of mind washing thing. Not maybe not maybe mind washing, but sort of a uh, conditioning type of device. And it obviously reminds me of Miss Hanus, like how she kind of tries to push back her her whimsy, her her free will almost, so to speak. Her, you know, silliness, her goofiness, her ma love of magic and all things colorful and nice and happy and free. Um, she tries to hide that and that was kind of showing up and we saw her cheek marks that were, you know, kind of showing up again. And then when she tried to brainwash herself back, the cheek marks went away. So it's very curious that these things these little suction cups are on her cheek marks this might be trying to program star into being more proper more uh you know formal princess because she's hanging out with eclipsa and obviously queen moon is not having that um and she was like oh she ran away with the monster oh my god and star's like hold up son you crystallized this woman because she was in love that's some pretty messed up stuff mom okay this isn't the <laughs> This isn't the 50s, mom. Just because she was in love doesn't mean you have to put her in jail. Okay, she's a no good monster lover. Okay, that's not cool. So now Star is all confused. She's she's suspicious of Eclipse and now that Moon was telling her the story. So I'm assuming Moon probably gave some more details into Eclipse. So we might get some more information other than the fact that she's just into monsters. There might be more to Eclipse's story here that, like we, uh, you know, pretty much suspected. But again. As we suspected, Star is kind of siding with Eclipse on this one, and this goes way back to last year, uh, pretty much a year ago now, where I was like, you know, Star is probably going to turn into a dark magic user by way of Eclipse somehow, some way, shape, or form. We know that she sympathizes with monsters, she's friends with Buff Frog and stuff like that. She was cool with Ludo helping and whatnot, and, you know, Marco is technically part monster because of the monster arm, so that's sort of, from a writing standpoint, that's like foreshadowing. So we all figured that Star was probably going to turn dark and maybe evil. I think what they're trying to do here is they were building Eclipsa up to be super duper evil. And even the first time we saw her in the battle for Muni, she was super goofy. She's like, oh, I want, I want some chocolate. <laughs> you know, so that was not at all what we were expecting from Eclipsa. But she still seems a little shady, obviously. She's, she's Eclipsa, her dark magic little deals, you know, it's very reminiscent to making a deal with the devil. So obviously Eclipsa is not 100%. In the clear, she's still kind of shady, but I think they're trying to build her up as a major, major villain and then kind of show us, hey, she's not so bad, you know, by way of star and then eventually reveal that she is pretty much that bad. And by that point, it'll be too late for star. Star will have already given into the darkness and using evil magic and stuff like that. Which he's already kind of done, but do it even more. Um, and then uh, Eclipsa says, The Magical High Commission and your mother think that's evil. And she, then she ironically, uh, sarcastically goes, Call me a villainess. And you hear all the reverb and stuff like that. So I, ah, I can't wait. I cannot wait for this. So obviously Eclipsa does not think she's evil. Maybe she is evil. I don't know. There's just so many questions here. But obviously there's going to be some conflicting uh, you know, ideologies going on. And obviously... Eclipse is not fully in the wrong. Eclipse did fall in love with a monster, yes, but I think the main point of this is going to be that, you know, Star is going to be the person to bridge the gap between the humans and the monsters for good. Everyone can live together peacefully, and I think that's what the end of the series is sort of, sort of you know, leading towards. And the whole title itself, Star vs. Forces of Evil, the forces of evil is hate. The forces of evil are the forces within her own self to control her dark magic. The forces of evil are the conceptions of all these monsters that they are evil. And it's kind of like a play, like, you know, normal on a, a, a standard cartoon, you might expect, oh, Star Wars Force of Evil, it's a, it's a little princess, she's fighting the evil monsters, but it's actually getting a lot deeper than that and more philosophical and sociological. So I cannot wait to see what happens. And this is going to be part of the two-week event that is going to be airing on Monday, November 6th. I absolutely cannot wait. So what do you guys think? Of this promo, what was your favorite part of this promo? Uh, obviously, my favorite part is anything clips were related. Uh, and <laughs> she's so smug, I love it. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just can't wait. So, what are you expecting from these string of episodes? Because we did get some titles and we got, you know, some more clips from other episodes that don't seem to be Eclipse related. So, I'm curious how they're going to tie this all in. I feel like this is probably going to be part of the half hour 
uh, event, which also might tie into the previous two episodes before that. So we'll just have to wait and see. But what do you guys think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to Cartoon Universe for more Strive vs. Force of Evil. Hopefully there's new promos before uh, the you know string of episodes come out, and we'll definitely be covering those. So hit that subscribe button if you're new here, and uh, hit that little notification bell so you can know when these promos are coming out, when the episode reviews are coming out, and all that good stuff. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I've been Mike Williams. You've been watching Cartoon Universe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.